Well, good afternoon. I'm Reverend David. Thank you for joining me today for Disciple Time as we continue on in our journey to Jerusalem. Today we are looking at St. Rose of Lima, and that is because today is August 23rd, which is the feast day of St. Rose of Lima. So I put her there on our map to Jerusalem, and of course we all know that St. Rose of Lima did not live in Christ's day. She's not mentioned in the Gospels, of course, um, but she's a saint that can intercede for us on our journey to Jerusalem because we know that in this life we're all going to uh, come into struggles, we're going to have afflictions. And so I love this quote by St. Rose of Lima that refers to struggles and afflictions. It says, Without the burden of afflictions, it is impossible to reach the height of grace. The gift of grace increases as the struggle increases. So uh, this is a very interesting quote because it helps us reorientate our focus in a way. You know, when we're moving through life and we come into struggles, which we will, and when we come into afflictions, instead of having our focus on these afflictions and on these struggles, what St. Rose of Lima is pointing out is that as those struggles and afflictions increase, so does God's grace. And so let's have our focus not on the struggles and the afflictions, but on the grace that's going to come along with those. And, you know, many people will offer their sufferings up as, a, as kind of a sacrifice to Christ in his sacrifice. So let's look a little deeper at St. Rose of Lima. She is the patron saint of Peru, and she's also the patron saint of all of South America. And this one, Bishop Jim will like. She is the patron saint of gardeners and florists. And those of you like uh, Janet Two Hawks, Kathy Thatcher, that like to sew and uh, make beautiful things like quilts, she's also the patron saint of embroiderers. Now, her given name at birth was Isabel Flores de Olivia. She lived from April of 1586 to August 1617. And this is really interesting. She was the first person in the Western Hemisphere to be canonized by the Roman Catholic Church. Who knew that, right? How about this? She was born into a noble family and was initially refused to be allowed to enter into religious life by her mother. Now, this created an interesting response because her mother wanted her to get married and she wanted to enter the religious life. So to deter suitors, from wanting her hand in marriage, she cut off all her hair, and then she took hot peppers, and she used them to blister up her face and skin, I guess to make it look like she had some kind of disease or to make her look hideous. Um, but this is how much she desired the religious life. And so after 10 years of having this battle with her parents, she made a vow of virginity, and she said, look, you know, no matter what, I, I'm going to remain a virgin. I'm going to remain uh, focused on my religious vocation. So she had this strong calling, and I like this because uh, this can be something we use if we're struggling in our vocation or if we're meeting resistance in our vocation. Maybe we can um, send some prayers through St. Rose of Lima to intercede for us uh, if we're meeting up with resistance in our vocation, or maybe if if children and parents are having trouble getting along and there's something uh, causing great conflict, maybe you could go to St. Rose of Lima and, and look for some intercession there. Well, in 1606, after 10 years, her mother did relent. Uh, she allowed Rose to become what we would call a third order Dominican, but she wouldn't let her go all the way and live into a convent. So what Rose did instead is she had to seclude herself kind of in a hut within the family's gardens. And so, um, you know, I want to talk a little bit real quick about the idea of the Third Order Dominican because you might be interested in a religious life. And perhaps God's putting it on you, and you don't really know much about religious life at all. But there's a lot of orders out there that you could be a part of that might bring you great fulfillment. And one that I'll probably talk about in a future episode is the Order of St. Luke. That is a religious order that I'm a part of. And the beautiful thing about the Order of St. Luke is it's ecumenical. So 
Uh, it covers all denominations. It covers women and men. It covers clergy and lay. Anyone can become um, a, f a full part of this religious order, and it has its own religious habit. Uh, it has a very beautiful rule of life, and I, I think I'll share that in a future episode. Um, but an interesting thing about getting back to St. Rose of Lima, one of the things that she would do is she had this silver circlet made that had little metal studs in it, and she would wear that like a crown of thorns. It was one of the ways that she kind of would enter into mortification and asceticism, and uh, through these practices of extreme asceticism, which she kind of got into, she experienced many mystical visions during her time. And uh, this even drove her further into service in her religious life. So we know that Rose devoted her life to the sick. She devoted her life to the needy people in her community. And sometimes she would even go out into the community and find these needy people or, or people or sick people and bring them back to a special room she had at her house uh, to care for them. And one of the ways she supported herself was she was a skilled needleworker. So uh, she would make fine lace, she would make embroideries, she would sell these along with the flowers from the gardens and her family's gardens, and she would take all this money and she would use it to help her meet the needs of the sick and the poor. And again, you know, of course she's a saint for a reason. Um, if we're struggling with our cor corporal works of mercy and are really getting our hands and feet dirty, helping the poor and the needy and the sick, um, that's another way that we can kind of, you know, ask for the intercession of St. Rose to help us in that task and in, into those works of mercies, because we know those graces are going to come through that. And one of the things I love uh, is this prayer card sold by Autumn, and Autumn is like a Catholic uh, online store that you can buy medals and cards and stuff like that. I want to read to you the prayer from this card, and if you want to buy this card to have and add to your collection, you can follow the link I'll have in the description. But listen to this beautiful prayer. Let's, let's pray it together, actually. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glorious St. Rose of Lima, you knew what it was to love Jesus with a fine and generous heart. Since infancy, you despised the world's vanities in order to embrace his cross. You loved with unfailing devotion our Heavenly Mother and professed a great tender dedication to the destitute, serving them the same way Jesus did. Dear God, our Father, teach us to imitate St. Rose of Lima's greatest virtues so that we, following her example, may enjoy her glorious protection in heaven. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I loved this quote on the bottom of this prayer card. It says, apart from the cross, there is no other ladder by which we may get to heaven. And we could look at that from so many different perspectives. We could certainly see it as apart from the cross of Christ. You know, Christ, his crucifixion, death, and resurrection, there's no other ladder by which we can get to heaven. But we can also see it from the angle of our need to involve ourselves in the corporate works of mercy. You know, Jesus said, if you'll follow me, then pick up your cross daily. If you're going to be my disciples, pick up your cross daily and follow me. And so the idea is that you know, in bearing our own afflictions and our own crosses, we're going to become more and more like Christ as we follow him day by day. Well, it's a beautiful prayer card. And so what is our application for the journey? Well, it's this. In the struggles and the trials, right? Keep enduring and call on Christ for additional grace. Remember, it was St. Rose of Lima that said the gift of grace increases as the struggle increases. So keep going to, to God for that grace. You might be going through some really hard times right now. Look for the grace. Depend on the grace. Rely on the grace. And I'm going to share this quote from 2 Corinthians 12, 9. It says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. Well, thank you for joining me today for Disciple Time. Have a blessed week.